Hello and welcome back to Unit 8 of our MOOC. Today we have Red Constantino with us again, the head of the Institute for Climate and Sustainable Cities in the Philippines. You already know him from his lecture on rebuilding after disasters in Unit 7. Today I will ask him some questions about the role of cities in times of a changing climate. Thank you, Red, for answering our questions today. You're welcome. And my first question is, there are a lot of important I issues facing developing countries today. So why focus on climate change? And what makes your work different from other NGOs? Well, let's make it clear. Climate change is bigger than everything else. It's the biggest issue that the world is facing today. And yet, for developing countries, it is not bigger or more important than other issues. Education is really, really crucial. Jobs, health, uh, shelter, food. These are all really critical uh, issues and challenges that developing countries face. Yeah. The problem is that when climate change impacts uh, create a, a, an effect on, uh, on, on a developing country community, mm. all the wrong policies that were implemented before are amplified, are magnified, and misery is exacerbated because food is affected, the ability of people to make livelihood, um, uh, uh, sustain, uh, sustain their jobs, um, to ensure that their shelter and uh, other basic needs are, are met. Are, are made more difficult because of uh, in the increasing uh, worsening of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, many civil society organizations are focusing on climate change impacts on rural communities. So why are you focusing on, on cities? Aren't rural communities more important? It's not that one is more important than the other. We've always believed that both are really, really important it's not enough to simply focus on the countryside uh, and it's also not enough to simply work on the cities. What we've found though is that more often than not when it comes to climate change a lot of NGOs mostly focus on rural issues which is important but still inadequate. Cities represent 75 percent of global emissions worldwide, global yeah. greenhouse gas emissions and that's a problem because it creates not only uh, greater uh, impacts in terms of uh, poverty uh, and uh, hunger for a lot of the rural poor, but also strain systems that are prevalent or already unstable in urban areas, especially in a developing country setting. What we need to do is to ensure that civil society plays a role that links both the countryside impacts of climate change and the increasing challenges in urban areas. Cities are also as important as the rural setting. Mm -hmm. And what are the most important impacts of cities and why do they deserve it attention? Cities are often thought of as um, something that is extremely good or extremely evil. Mm -hmm. We've always felt that it's neither. Sim cities are simply um, a, a source of uh, economic growth. It is where aggregated economies occur. It is a spatial expression of production. It is where people often um, uh, find themselves to concentrate capital and their efforts in order to um, uh, agglomerate um, uh, what resources that they already have. The problem is that cities are also, can also be very wasteful and very inefficient. Um, while it takes uh, less energy or less effort to to connect, for instance, the needs of one locality with another because of the proximity, the space, the nearness of each other in terms of uh, concentrated economies in a city. Mm -hmm. It also produces vast amounts of pollution. Yeah. It also produces vast amounts of waste. And cities become um, potentially a source of unsustainable uh, uh, lifestyles, unsustainable means by which people feed themselves. This has all has to change because cities can uh, uh, have a role to play not only in decreasing the impacts uh, that poor people uh, encounter with increasing frequency nowadays, but they can also play a larger solution in the future. Yeah, and uh, that would be my next question. I mean, can 
cities be part of the solution? And if yes, can you explain a little bit further how and why? Cities can be solutions mainly because the very root causes of why they produce so much waste and pollution and contribute a lot to climate change can be reversed. And we can see them also as opportunities by which investments can be made in, in enterprises that uh, take up less energy, in, in communities that um, uh, are more sustainable in the way they produce energy and feed themselves as well, in the way that communities can form uh, uh, common efforts by which they can be more autonomous and uh, uh, generate less pollution. Um, the impacts of uh, cities on climate change are, are not trivial. Rising sea levels, mm. um, uh, temperatures uh, becoming higher, um, largely in cities where uh, the weather is much hotter, um, uh, flooding uh, because of uh, bad waste management and land use planning. These can all be reversed as well if cities think of themselves as part of the solution rather than just recipients of uh, what has always been uh, inefficient economies and now is uh, seen as a, a driver of climate change impacts and as a recipient of uh, worsening impacts as well. Yeah. Um, I have a question to climate finance. So mm -hmm. um, many think that uh, climate finance is best directed to rural localities as they argue that cities all already have enough access to funding. What is your take on this? I think, again, people should not choose. Um, mm -hmm. While the countryside definitely requires a, a large amount of intervention in terms of resources and government attention uh, and policy uh, uh, development, um, cities have their own unique role and have their own unique deficit, which is that just because they have a agglomeration economies doesn't mean that their resources are enough. If we look at the interests of working class neighborhoods, if we look at the vulnerabilities that communities are facing in urban areas, they are equally uh, in need of resources and government support, mm -hmm. maybe in terms of different applications, uh, by ensuring that what works uh, in a city, what makes it sustainable, is also able to contribute to the global uh, climate good. For instance, in ensuring that um, instead of motorists uh, gain, get, getting the, the priority attention from government, commuters and pedestrians become prioritized. Yeah. This in turn produces a co-benefit, which is climate change uh, uh, impacts reduced because you, you take up less, uh, you use up uh, less fossil fuels. For instance, when you um, pay more attention to public transport uh, rather than individual uh, vehicles. If communities are also more reliant on producing their own energy needs uh, from renewable energy sources, um, not only for, to, to generate uh, sustainable livelihoods, but also to make them more prepared mm -hmm. and more able to adapt to the increasingly uh, varying vagaries of climate change, then they're also able to contribute to the greater good as well. Urban farming um, is a means by which uh, communities can feed themselves and at the same time uh, reduce uh, the amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted uh, by uh, preferring uh, to, to choose and eat local. Um, and uh, a large number of uh, options that uh, uh, cities can, can, uh, can, can take up. Uh, not simply because of external resources, but because of resources that it should be able to generate on its own. Okay, thank you, Red, so much for coming and for giving us all these interesting insights. So have a good fly back to the Philippines and I wish you good luck for your work against climate change and for a reasonable way of adaptation. Thank, thank you. you.